Greece is blessed and I don't want to say cursed, but also, you know, lives in a very particular neighborhood. It's a difficult one. In some ways, I wish that Sweden could move where we are and we could move where Sweden is and exchange neighbors for a couple of years. You know, maybe if we did so, uh, we would understand you better, you would understand us better. Uh, but it is a very, very difficult neighborhood. Uh, in the north, we have the Balkans. The Balkans that are very fragile and very violent, as you know and we know in the past, in the past decades, and still. The, uh, the attempt to create national identities through focusing on nationalism or blood or religion in a region that is so multicultural by definition uh, are attempts that obviously contain within them the possibility of explosions. Turkey is a big, important, serious country that needs to change dramatically. And its prospect of entering the EU is perhaps a unique way to do so. Which is why both Sweden and Greece have supported very strongly Turkey's European perspective. But, and there is a but, which is not unique to Turkey, but to any candidate country, Inclusion into the EU requires changes, requires responsibilities. The Middle East, this very painful story, is in a very critical moment right now. The attempt that we have been making as Greece with our contacts, I was in, in Israel and Palestine uh, a few weeks ago, is to attempt to get the parties to the negotiating table for a two-country solution that is viable, that gives the Palestinians what they deserve, their own land, their own country, and that gives Israel what it deserves, which is its security. But it's easier said than done. And what we have now in September is the potential for a crisis on this issue, including with the United Nations and the possibility of a filing of a uh, request by the Palestinians uh, to the General Assembly uh, for uh, recognition at the General Assembly. I think that Europe has a responsibility to ensure that, that the process of negotiation and the pressure to resume them on an honest basis, not just to say that they're resumed, um, gets pushed forward. There will not be any solution to the Middle Eastern problem other than a negotiated one, I believe. Libya, Libya is interesting and the Arab Spring is interesting because of course we have an extremely hopeful situation that is also fraught, we are not uh, naive about this, with uh, landmines. We have a explosion of the democratic desire of peoples around uh, the Arab world uh, to take their fate in their hands. Uh, we have a number of leaders who have been anything but democratic and who have proved in some cases in the past months that they uh, can resort without particular problems to major violence against their people. At the same time, we have as Europe a responsibility to ensure that democracy springs out of these processes. We don't allow a new Iraq to develop. We have a change in power, but then you have a vacuum that allows for internal tensions and differences to come out in the open. Now, Tripoli's almost fall, because think the, 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 the picture there is, is quite confusing. I can tell you a little more about this if you want, to, at least from my information. But I would say inevitable fall uh, in the immediate future uh, was not that easily predicted by all of us who were following this issue. I think you did this. 
it was a polite way of saying I've gone on too far. Okay. Um, fine. Uh, but now Europe has a responsibility in terms of the democratic process, in terms of the constitution of the country, in terms of the way that this moves forward to be present now. Because the danger of restitutive killings by the uh, rebels is there. We've seen it. Uh, it would be a horrible thing to happen. The danger of some remnants of the regime fighting to the end and continuing the blood spill is there. And so our responsibility is also there. And we have to take it seriously. Uh, I, mentioned, uh, I mentioned Turkey a little bit uh, before. And let me also uh, touch upon Cyprus for a second, because I think that's an important issue. We have, and we have had in the past few weeks, very disturbing, in my view, statements on the part of uh, Turkey regarding Cyprus. Uh, Prime Minister Erdogan, uh, Foreign Minister Davutoglu, came out and said openly that they're embarrassed to be sitting at the same table at the UN with a non-existent country, which is, in their view, Cyprus. They said that in the negotiations that the Greek Cypriots and the Turkish Cypriots are having right now, very sensitive ones, to be able to find a resolution of this long-lasting problem. Uh, they will, they announced that uh, they will not return some occupied cities to the Greek Cypriots uh, as if they owned the island. Well, the fact of course of the matter is that they do in that, in the sense that they occupy half of it and Turkey does. But we all thought, thought and felt that what we had here was genuine negotiations between the two truly interested parties on the island, which are the Greek Cypriots and the Turkish Cypriots. We, we, they want to live together. And everyone out from the outside should not be interfering. They have recently stated that if Cyprus explores its own territorial waters and economic zone under the law of the sea, which is an international law that we all accept, Turkey doesn't, that they will dot, 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 implying anything from military intervention to who knows what else. This is very disturbing. It is very disturbing because Turkey indeed can play a very important, a critical, a pivotal role as we desire it to play and as you desire it to play in promoting peace and stability in the region. Anything that leaves that role has to be, in my view, very clearly condemned, and condemned by Turkey's friends, by those who do want it in the EU, because believe you me, there are also people who look at these statements and rub their hands, because that means that they can ensure that Turkey never has a, an EU prospect. But it requires condemnation. Turkey has a threat of war, casus belli out, the Turkish parliament against Greece, another EU member state, in the event that Greece, under the law of the sea, expands its own territorial waters. I mention this because I think it's quite important to do so in Sweden, because we do share the same, and we are I don't say one of the few, but, you know, we are in the same line of thinking in terms of the importance of enlarging Europe with the Balkans and with Turkey. And the importance that we place in this process of ensuring that Turkey fulfills all obligations that it has under European acquis, European principles, European law to do so. Entering the EU is not an a la carte process. I cannot pick and choose whether or not I'm going to be a good neighbor. I cannot pick and choose whether or not I will make changes to my laws. I have to. My hope is that Turkey is still of the mindset that it wishes to enter the EU, and I believe that it is. My hope is that some EU countries that may be having second thoughts or maybe having enlargement fatigue can change their mind on this. This is a difficult process. We as Greeks will work on both sides of the equation to try to reignite it, to try to ensure that if Turkey fulfills all the responsibilities that it has towards the EU, the EU will genuinely make Turkey a member. 
because I think that that is the only way to ensure both Europe's interests and Turkey's interests and Greece's interests and everyone else's interests. Dear friends, I close saying the following. I mentioned before the solidarity principle that has been violated. To me, the biggest problem that we have faced as Europeans the past year and a half is not so much that the standard things that I find abhorrent, but I know exist, a rise in nationalism in Europe, and rise in anti-immigration sentiment, a rise in racism. We have all those things, and in many countries we have them with the expression of political parties advocating them as well, which I find particularly disturbing. The biggest problem that we have is that we have turned against each other. That we have allowed a financial crisis that made us all feel insecure, instead of holding hands to begin pointing fingers. Instead of utilizing our collective humongous power to get out of this crisis together, as a whole, to begin shutting ourselves in our shells, to be saying, well, leave me alone, I'm doing everything right. If you want to go die, go die. Don't talk to me. And then, upon all this, to start casting aspersions on each other. So, you know, I'm here, as you can imagine, I'm a Greek, of course, I'm proud to be Greek, but it turns out I'm also a pig. Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece, Spain, right? The pigs. And Germany is not just Germany, but it turns out that many people in Europe now see it as the big, bad, you know, whip master that whips people into shape and, you know, brings out all these terrible memories of, you know, doing all those things. Well, I think that is extremely dangerous, extremely offensive. I fight it in my country when it happens. And I will fight it everywhere in Europe. I will fight it everywhere in Europe. I am proud to be Greek. I'm proud to be a pig. I'm proud to be Italian. I am proud to be German. I would be especially proud if Germany had problems to be able to be there and help. I'm proud to be Polish. I'm proud to be British. Today I'm especially proud to be Swedish because I'm proud to be European. Thank you.